for uh, Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. Um, if those of you that are participating via Zoom, if you would please mute your phones. Um, this is a public meeting. So um, we'll begin this morning's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Boyce. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <clears throat> uh, good morning, everyone. So today we're recognizing natural, National Agriculture Week. Uh, it starts uh, next week on the 21st, and U.S. farmers are expected to increase their yield by 70% by the year 2050. More crops are needed because of our world population of 7.8 billion people is expected to add another 2 billion people in the next three decades. Agriculture is and has been the cornerstone of our national economy, and this population growth means agriculture's role in our economy will also grow. Today we pay tribute to National Agriculture Week, and the President of the Franklin County Farm Bureau, John Hummel, and Vice President uh, Lauren Prettyman is here to tell us more about uh, the importance of agriculture, and I also understand uh, the Federation has numer numerous guests with them this morning. So I'd like to recognize the Bureau's organization, Director Melinda Lee, and several Franklin County Farm Bureau members, including um, Dwight Booker, Jack Oram, Catherine Harrison, Nick Zwayer, Denise Johnson, and Chuck Hines. Did I leave anybody out? All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here today. Good morning, thanks for having us. Um, my name is Melinda Lee. I'm the organization director for um, Franklin County Farm Bureau. Um, we did have some folks that couldn't be with us today, um, but we do have some of those folks that he mentioned here with us. So I'm going to have John start and tell you a little bit about Ag Week. As, uh, as Mr. O'Grady said, I'm, I'm John Hummel, Franklin County Farm Bureau President. Just a few, th I'm a full time farmer in Franklin County. Uh, just a few things about agriculture that we kind of picked out, we thought uh, the crowd might like to hear. Um, as the world population soars, the, the greater demand for food, fiber, and, and fuel obviously soars with it. Um, we need to understand how our food is, is produced and our fiber and renewable resources along with it. Um, the value and, and the essential role that, that agriculture plays in, in Ohio's economy and, and in Franklin County here is, is tremendous and, and we just wanted to recognize those things. Um, almost everything we eat uh, and where on a daily basis and an increasingly contributing number of fuel sources and bioproducts is uh, is produced in the agriculture sector these are uh, this is from the census in 2017 so it might be a little bit outdated but just uh, the number of farms in Franklin County is uh, 408 uh, ac the number of acres in, in uh, Franklin County that's that's been in production, again, these probably a little outdated, but uh, is 52, a little over 52,000 acres, and the average farm size is 128 acres. So we just want to appreciate uh, the the county commissioners taking time to recognize this um, this powerful week for for our organization. Yeah, they do the census every five years, so the new numbers will come out this year. So um, just wanted to point that out. They are outdated, but. They only do the census every five years. Um, and then I just wanted to share a little bit um, about Farm Bureau and why um, we wanted to come here today and talk to you guys a little bit about ag. But Farm Bureau, um, we're an organization. You don't have to be a farmer to be a member. Um, we do a lot within our community um, to support youth. Um, we're very involved at the fair. We work with Extension a lot, especially their Master Gardeners program. Um, we have had tours out there and invited our members last year. We're doing that again. Um, we like to share where your food comes from. There's a lot of farming in Franklin County. Um, some people don't realize that. Um, so we, like I said, do a lot to support that. During National Ag Week, I encourage you to check us out on Facebook. We're going to be sharing a lot of different facts. Um, about agriculture in, in Franklin County and the state of Ohio. Um, so we do have some baskets that we wanted to give to the commissioners today that have local products in them from our members. Um, we've got also facts about um, the, the papers that John, John was reading um, and just some information about Farm Bureau. 
We've got popcorn grown here in Franklin County by Jim Coolwine and then eggs from Harrison Farm. So we're super excited um, to sh share a little bit of Franklin County agriculture with you guys. Well, thank you. We also have um, a, a, a resolution yeah. or a, a thing here we'd like to get a photo with you, but if my colleagues would like to add sure. anything. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for being here today. Um, love uh, Ag Week. Um, since I've been in elected up, not even since I've been elected, um, but even when I was running, I um, have been designated a friend of the Farm Bureau, um, continuing to support the work of our farmers here in Franklin County, but then even in the legislature across the state of Ohio. Um, and here in um, Franklin County, uh, one of the newer members on the local food board, which I know uh, Commissioner O'Grady might talk about, um, is uh, the newer member is Mr. Aaron, who is a master farmer, a black a uh, gentleman resident on the east side of Columbus that has, um, you know, dedicated his work to getting youth involved with all things agriculture, um, and especially in the urban farming uh, setting. Um, and then, you know, Franklin County, we continue to support our youth um, in getting them opportunities to learn about all things agriculture, partnering with OSU and OSU Extension. Our most recent program is the Urban Roots Program, which we also see not just as an um, agricultural program for youth in Franklin County, but also an anti-violence um, program where uh, kiddos uh, from seventh grade all the way through high school can learn all things agribusiness, environmental science, animal science, um, urban farming, and, and so really proud of the work that um, the extension is doing with uh, the Board of Commissioners um, and the local school districts to provide opportunities for you to learn about all the things. It's not just um, plows and cows, um, but you know that technology is part of farming and um, there's jobs there, but then there's just also um, a way of life that produces um, you know, produce for all of us and, and fuel sources. So thank you for all that you all do at the Farm Bureau, um, but also what you do to keep youth in, engaged and involved. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we'll say it to my colleague, Commissioner Crawley. Um, the only thing I would add uh, to that um, is uh, additionally thanking you for um, everything you do every day, but you didn't mention that today was National Pie Day. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping that those ingredients somehow fit into uh, the broader conversation of what's really important, and that's desserts. Um, um, and in all, in all seriousness, um, you know, food security is probably uh, the number one measure of quality of life on the globe. Access to um, nutrition, access to a, a, um, a healthy diet is a part of um, nearly every measurement, some way or another, uh, the quality of life. And, and I think of the challenges that farmers face today um, to provide that security to all of us, uh, environmental changes. Um, we're seeing now, it was on the news today, this morning, that um, they we're talking about the allergy season and why it's going to be more aggressive this year, but the underlying cause of that is uh, weather change and weather pattern changes. Um, um, also seeds. I remember being on a trip to Switzerland and um, I think it was Switzerland. Switzerland? I don't remember now. It was years ago, but uh, the discussion was built around seed shortages in, in different areas uh, for growing crops on the globe, not, not just the U.S. Um, runoff, um, certainly runoff in, you know, Central Ohio. Uh, I grew up here as a kid and um, today Central Ohio is not the Central Ohio that I grew up in. There were farms everywhere when I grew up in Central Ohio a uh, long time ago. Um, and the development and the growth that we see, part of the, um, uh, the negative impact is the runoff that impacts uh, our farming uh, that's still left on those 408 farms that you talked about. And then finally, as I said earlier, the weather change. And so um, to um, build on what Commissioner Crawley was saying, thank you for what um, you do what you represent, but, but more importantly, thank you for hanging in there um, because it's a fight for our life. It's a fight for the quality of life for all of us, and uh, we don't take that lightly. Um, I am not a person who cooks every day. 
uh, I must admit. So um, the, the grocery store is probably feeling the impact of me not being there and shopping. Um, but when you go to restaurants, it's the same cycle. So um, I contribute that way. Um, <clears throat> that being said, um, uh, thank you again for what you uh, do, what you represent. And um, I've never grown anything in my life uh, in terms of uh, food. Not like John. I mean, John's like the master of all this conversation <laughs> oh, yes. here, and all deference to him. But um, I'm always willing to learn and and, um, and love coming to the Farm Bureau's events and uh, and always experiencing what uh, you uh, uh, the reminder that you share with us every year of how hard your members work mm -hmm. on our behalf. So thank you so much. Well, thank you to my colleagues and thank you guys for being here today and reminding us and reminding all of us of this conversation. Um, you know, the, the pandemic over the last few years is, has separated us in, in a couple of ways. You know, generally we get together in the spring and, and have a meeting with you guys, and, and we always look forward to that with all the elected officials, um, which hasn't happened too much. And then our schedules are always kind of a little bit busy. And, um, and then the last few years, our, our schedules have conflicted because we usually come and meet with you guys at the fair every year. But we've, you know, we're all three of us are very involved in our National Association of Counties. <clears throat> and that schedule is conflicted. And so we've always been out of town the last few years, the last two or three years during the fair. Uh, and so we miss being at the fair every year. We miss having lunch with you guys there. And we miss uh, the, the commissioner's uh, pie, pie contest. Um, but, uh, you know, the work that we do here is, is, you know, in a lot of ways integrates with the work that you guys do. And so it, it means a lot to us. And so even though we haven't been with you that much lately, we've, we still continue to do the work with you guys and the work that we do with OSU Extension, the work that we do here um, and that, that involves local foods and, and all the things that, that we've been a part of. Um, just last week, I, was, I had the, the opportunity to be with one of our sister cities in, uh, in Denmark, Olenza, Denmark. And before I went, the, the staff for sister cities did a pretty phenomenal job of letting them know that I'm, I guess, known as the food commissioner. <laughs> um, and so when I got there, I, I didn't know before I went that uh, Denmark leads Europe in uh, food production and agriculture. And so, they're the, yeah, they're the number one producer. It's a very, very small uh, um, uh, uh, country. Um, there's they have, they're, the population of Denmark's half the population of Ohio. And from a, from a uh, geographic standpoint, it's also very small. It's, it's about, I think it's about the size of, of Ohio. But 61% they, they, of their economy is, is based on agriculture. Um, and it's, it's the, they have the mainland, which is attached to Germany, but then they're, they're an island or a, a nation of islands. Um, Jutland, which is the, 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 area, the, the area that's attached to Germany, is a big part of their, um, their agricultural production. Um, Funen, which is where o Oensa is, which is our sister city, is also a big part of their agricultural production. Everywhere they went, they were very, very proud of their agri agricultural production. Um, and they were very happy to show it off. And so uh, we were very well fed while we were, while we were there. They're also uh, big leaders in, um, <clears throat> in uh, the culinary world because of their production. They're, they have 19 Michelin star restaurants, uh, or they are owners of 19 Michelin stars. And so um, it is... It is it was really great to, to get to learn and to know about um, our partner in that part of the world and, and to know about their, their pride and their agricultural production and their pride and their, uh, their culinary leadership in, in all of Europe. I mean, you think of Europe and you think of the culinary world, you think of, you think of France, you think of Italy, you know, and here it is Denmark that's one of the big leaders in that area. Um, and so we are anxious to go back there next year. Uh, lead a delegation to go back there sometime in the in the warmer months because it was pretty chilly while we were there. Um, but it's uh, you know and it was it was good for me to be able to have um, partnerships with with you and your organization and who've learned all that I've learned over the last better than 15 years as a county commissioner from from your organization and from uh, your folks and you guys I think you guys know I grew up in uh, the farm farming part of Franklin County I grew up out in Brown Township and so. Um, having the background that I have because of your organization and, and uh, your, your uh, members um, was very helpful to be able to be on the international stage and, and have a background in knowing what I know from, from organizations like yours, so thank you. Um, we also passed years ago our resolution that, that allows for um, people in our, 
um, not non or unincorporated areas to be able to have uh, a combination of chickens, ducks, and rabbits. And so those eggs right there, my family's going to be pretty uh, excited about because uh, we go. I actually haven't bought uh, eggs at a grocery store in a long time because the little boy across the street raises his, raises chickens, and so Toby mm -hmm. comes over every couple of weeks and brings some eggs over. I pay him an extra little fee for delivery, give him a tip for delivery, but we get farm fresh eggs uh, all the time. Um, and uh, he doesn't have ducks or rabbits, thank goodness. I think the rest of the neighborhood might be a little upset about that. But uh, being that I live in Norwich Township now, we, we're able to have farm fresh eggs. So we appreciate you guys being here today to help us uh, remind not only the folks in the audience, but all those, so the folks that are on, online watching and the folks that are on television watching us uh, about the importance of, of, of farms and farming, especially here in a place, an urban, an urban setting here like Franklin County. So thank you. Commissioner Gray, do you grow anything? Absolutely. Do you grow What's anything? It? I do. I grow, uh, obviously, obviously, I'm not the, I'm not the, 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 uh, the farmer that these guys think I am. I grow tomatoes. <laughs> uh, I grow cucumbers because my daughter will eat a cucumber a day if we allow it. Um, I grow, uh, um, and then I grow all kinds of herbs. Uh, so we have a huge herb garden every year because I like to cook. So, and I try to bring some in and for you Christmas. Come and crowd. Share them. Oh, and I also I also buy I buy or I cook or I grow, cook I grow hot peppers. I grow mm -hmm. jalapenos and habaneros every year because you've got to be able to make that spicy mustard every uh, every August. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so we, we do, I do grow that yeah, stuff. Yeah. It, those That's are pretty, impressive, man. Tomatoes That's are impressive. tough to grow, as you guys know. Tomatoes are tougher. They're <laughs> a little trickier. But uh, cucumbers and uh, um, uh, uh, peppers, those things will grow about anywhere. So, And herbs grow about anywhere. So, Will they grow in apartments? Yes. Yeah. No, because I can't grow anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Herbs, will, yeah. yeah. herbs, will, herbs huh. will grow anywhere. Oh, huh, okay. I'm going to do a picture. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do this. If you guys don't mind, we want to. Yeah. We have a resolution for you, a ceremony resolution for you, and we'd like to get a picture with you. Come on. Come on. I love it. Let's do it. Oh, my gosh, I love that. Beautiful. You know, if you put those up on the. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll, well, first, we'll give them a picture. <laughs> yeah, give them a picture. Yeah, we'll give that to you. All right. We also have the pleasure of welcoming some of the county's uh, most impressive young artists. Uh, we did this two weeks ago, and uh, now we have the rest of them here. So <laughs> the, the best of them here. Um, so we have Franklin County Artists and Scholars Recognition Program. We, uh, we've been doing this for some time. We honor uh, high school students who exemplify excellence in the arts and academics. 24 students from 10 school districts have earned this uh, accolade, and their art uh, represents a variety of mediums from studio, videography, visual and digital arts, as well as theater and the music, uh, and theater and music. How appropriate is the day after the, or two days after the Oscars? Uh, where's the red carpet? <laughs> um, we're honoring 11 students this morning, and the other artists were recognized late last month. Let's start by welcoming our good friend and partner, is Tom here? Tom Katzenmeyer, there he is, hiding in the back. 
as usual. Tom Katzenmeyer, President and CEO of the Greater Columbus Arts Council. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. I regret that I did not wear my green tie today. <laughs> it would have been the perfect day to do it. <laughs> uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, I want the students, their parents, and the teachers that are here to know that the county commissioners have supported the arts for years and years and years. And they have recently, sort of over the last four years, entrusted my organization, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, to do the grant making in the arts on behalf of the commissioners and uh, the county. So we're very grateful for that support. Um, it's a great year. The last time I was here, I said that it's our 50th year, and we realized that several of us, except for Erica, are older than 50 years old. So um, it's, it's a great year for the arts. We have the Arts Festival coming up. No, you didn't need 10. to have that comment <laughs> okay. in there. That, you, didn't, you didn't need to say that, OK? We, we know that, right? right. 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 Repeat it. Yeah, we know. It's worth repeating. Right, right. Uh, yes, it's, right. It's about I mean, Erica. Geez. Yes. Jeez. <laughs> um, so uh, a great, it's going to be a great year yeah. in the arts. <laughs> yes, right. There goes, we'll sure there goes the funding. Yes. <laughs> uh, so arts festival coming up on the riverfront with good weather. We'll have 500,000 people down there June 9th, 10th, and 11th. I hope you'll all come. I've given each student my business card so they can stay in touch with me as their careers flourish. I, after they leave, if they leave for four years, they've got to come back here practice their art here. I want them to work in the arts here, and it's all good. I want to introduce you all to Dr. Betty Hill, who's here, 30-year uh, Columbus City School employee. She coordinates all things arts for the district. She is a legend, and I'm working on a tremendous community project with her, in fact, right now. But I'm so was so happy to see you with the students here today. Dr. So Hill, just excuse him. Yeah. He can't seem to help pointing out, you know, how long people have been around. It's, just, it's, a, it's, a, right. it's a thing that he has. It's a condition. So, so with that, I think we're ready to do some photos. And we, uh, we yeah. are. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna call everybody up. Tom, by okay. the way, I was it wasn't just all about food last week in Denmark. Uh, I want to hear about the art. We, yes. I also took your challenge and I took as many or photos of public art while I was in Thank you. both Copenhagen and uh, Oensa as I could. Uh, I will have to admit though, as much as they have public art, which some of it is, is brand new, some of it is very old, um, uh, the architecture in, in Denmark is really uh, mm -hmm. public art because yeah. they have a mixture of uh, some very, very, as you can imagine, some very, very old uh, buildings and architecture, um, some things that date back as much as a thousand years. Um, and then they also have some brand new, very cutting edge architecture in, in uh, Denmark. And so, um, but I took, uh, I took more pictures than my, uh, my kids ex expected yeah. that they would have to endure when I got home. I want to see them. Thank you. So anyway, uh, all right. So when I announce your school, uh, we invite you to join us up here at the podium. Um, but uh, please, uh, for you school administrators, please uh, introduce your students and feel free to share uh, more about not only their art, but about them as, as individuals. Um, and if they're graduating this year, uh, we'd like to hear about their future plans. Uh, once the students have been recognized, then we ask you guys, just like we just did, to come up uh, so that we can uh, get a photo with uh, them as well. Uh, so we're going to begin with... Um, Miss Hill and uh, students from Columbus City Schools. Uh, we recognize five artists, and these students represent various forms of art, including music, visual, and performing arts in the theater. Uh, Miss Hill oversees the district's art programs for K to 12. And thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning, uh, Miss Betty Hill. Yeah, students, come on up. Good morning, and thank morning. you so much. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I am. Come on, come on this way. Come on around this way. This way. Yes, yes. Come on. I am Dr. Betty Hill, and it is my honor. It has been truly my honor to um, to have served Columbus City Schools and our students for 30 years. I 
I do not deny. <laughs> um, it, it has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life to uh, work with our students. They are wonderful. And um, this morning, I am um, in keeping with our strategic priority and our students leading the way, preparing them for the future and being future leaders. I'm going to ask them uh, to briefly just say something about themselves, briefly, and I've already talked to them. But I want to say that I am here to represent our wonderful students um, and the vast array of talent that we do have in the district. Um, and uh, we, we have students here that will represent that, but we do have a vast array of talent, and I'm, I'm honored to be here with our students. So our first student here um, is Carter Robinson. Please, Carter, come right over here and say something. Good morning, everyone. I'm Carter Robinson. I'm, 18 year, I'm an 18 year old senior and a product of Fort Hayes. I specialize in writing slash poetry, leadership, and also theater. Uh, while, in, during, while during my education in the high school, I participate in a lot of extracurricular organizations as far as Kappa League, Columbus Youth Council, as well as Ubuntu Leadership Institute, Colum oh, already Columbus Fashion Alliance, and Fort Hayes' Green Team. After graduating high school, I plan to study a political science degree at Central State and minor in marketing, specifically in the fashion industry. While uh, getting my degree, I plan to come back to Columbus, work as a legislative aide, then become a city councilman and eventually governor. So okay. it's an honor to meet you all this morning, and I hope you hear my name again. Thank you. Um, and of course, and next we have uh, from Linda McKinley, Skylar Davila. Good morning, how are you all doing today? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Skylar Davila and I am from Linda McKinley. I am a senior graduating and I, after school I do plan on going to Central State University to do business management and hopefully one day open my own business in a clothing line and come back to my Linden community to become a partner to bring up my youth and inspire many of the others. Um, I am the senior class president at Lyndon McKinley. Um, it is my goal to at least raise and get my senior class up there to a graduating. So we all walk across the stage. And um, I'm also the marching band drum major. I play saxophone. And um, I'm really happy to meet a lot of you here today. And um, that's really all about me. <laughs> um, and next we have Isabel Gosser. Good morning, I'm Good morning. Isabel from Fort Hayes High School. I'm a visual artist in the Career Center program. And moving forward, I'm proud to say that I'm a future Buckeye. I'll be attending the architecture school at OSU. Yay. I work in a lot of different mediums and I love to experiment and innovate with art. And I'm happy to incorporate creativity in anything I do in the future. Okay, and next we have Akiem Parnell from Linda McKinley. Good morning, everybody. I'm also from Linda McKinley and a graduating senior. And I play trombone. I'm in my marching band and concert band, so I like to think I'm a musician. And then sometimes I do some stuff on the side, like this Sunday I just got done doing the symphony. And then that's pretty much it. After high school, I plan to head over to Arkansas and study computer science, and then possibly come back and then be a software engineer. All right. Akim left out that he is going with full tuition. Uh, that's it. Yes. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, we have Miss Cheyenne um, Reeves from Marion Franklin. Morning. Um, so Morning. I go to Fort Hayes also. And I'm a part of the National Technical Honor Society there. And at Marion Franklin, I am a part of the National Honor Society. I am a salutatorian at Marion Franklin, which means I'm number two in my senior class with a 4.0. Right. And I teach dance at Marion Franklin Recreation Center. I've been teaching for years now. And I, I'm, I'm a part of Andrew Bell Performing Arts. I've been a part of the dance company for year since the third grade and after high school I want to major in zoology and minor in dance come back and have my dance studio oh, great. 
and we really thank you this morning for having us and honoring these students. We are very proud of them in Columbus City. Thank you. Thank you, folks. We appreciate it. Uh, let's come up and have a picture. Now. Better gig down here, man. We help a lot more people. Yes. County's bigger than the city. <laughs> think bigger. It is. That's what I'm saying. All right. Uh, next, we have Southwestern City Schools. Uh, they have four award-winning students, uh, but in like Columbus. They represent various art mediums, Grove City uh, High School Assistant Principal Zach Ward and Steve Fares, Principal at Central Crossing High School, are both here to tell us about their students. Uh, I think Mr. Ward, if you want to go first, and then uh, Mr. Fares can speak. However you guys want to do it. Okay, thank you. First of all, thank you to the Board, uh, board of Commissioners for taking this time to, to recognize our students. Thank you to the staff and the families out there. Um, I, I think it's always great, no matter what the, the, the passion is that our students find, whether it be the arts or something else. Uh, and thank you to the county for continuing to support uh, our students and, and the arts through the various events you guys hold, so we can't thank you enough. Uh, so we have three students from Grove City High School that are being recognized. A couple of them will speak. One of them doesn't want to, it's okay, so no pressure. Um, and congrats again to the other students uh, being recognized as well. So first we'll have Alexandra Pinto come on up, and I'll read what her teacher said about Alex. Alex is gifted with the ability to draw exactly what she sees. Her attention to detail is precise, making her artwork elegant and satisfying to the eye. Every drawing she completes causes her viewer to want to get up close to it, see how she was able to accomplish it. Her drawings are amazing to the eye, and, has, and Alex has incredible work ethic to go along with her great talent. Uh, she's impressive, and no matter what she sees, She's able to do it and make it her own. Alex should be recognized for impressive talent. So congrats, Alex, and then go ahead and share what you're doing next year and uh, anything else. Um, I don't plan on um, going to college next year. I do plan on starting to work, but I, I do have a dream of becoming a tattoo artist because I enjoy multiple forms of art. Mm -hmm. And I like how tattoo art, I like how a being a tattoo artist, you can express multiple different types of art. I also enjoy, greatly enjoy character design and different types of fashion from different cultures and different, and drawing many different people. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the, I just enjoy what a lot of other, a lot of places in the world have to offer and how different <coughs> multi, multimedia, different kinds of art can express a lot of, it's just beautiful. I think it's all beautiful, but I do plan on becoming a tattoo artist if, if I can. Next, we have Viv Rodriguez. Viv has taken several years of photography and is the type of artist who is reflective and vulnerable. She creates work from the heart and never shies away from exploring complex topics about the world around her. Viv arts, Viv's art often makes an impact and is pleasing to see and often is thought-provoking and gets conversation started. Congrats to Viv and come on up and share your next steps. Hello, um, my name is Viv Rodriguez. I'm um, planning to go to the University of Akron next year. 
Um, I'm going to be uh, majoring in early, early childhood special education. It's a, it's a big major. It's a mouthful. Um, and I'm really, really excited to do that because I'm really passionate about that. Um, and I'm going to ma- minor <coughs> in creative writing. But uh, the reason I'm here is for photography. And photography is also a big passion of mine. Um, I really enjoy actually combining creative writing and photography in the in the photos that were sent in. Um, a lot a lot of my photos have um, words in them too, so I like combining those two mediums. And um, I don't know. I mean, I'm excited to uh, pursue photography in the future. And then next we have Natalie Mojica. Come on up. Uh, Natalie is an expert in digital art. She's the type of artist that dives deep into solving visual problems with outside the box thinking. She uses humor and color in expressive ways and is destined to continue to create eye-catching work using cutting edge technology. So congratulations, Natalie. You good on speaking? You don't want to? Okay, perfect. Uh, So again, thank you to these students and great job. And thank you to the staff that works with them every day and the parents that continue to push and challenge them. Uh, thank you. And next we have Mr. Ferris from Central Crossing High School. Thank you, Mr. Wired. Again, my name is Steve Ferris, principal of Central Crossing High School. Um, commissioners, thank you for taking the time out of your busy days to recognize our students for their work. Um, we, we truly appreciate that. I'm here to introduce Anna Sinyuk. And Anna has proven to be quite an artist, spending the last four years pushing herself to create unique pieces of work that promote her style, interests, and vision of the world. One of the most unique areas Anna has grown in um, is her inspiration and leadership for others. Anna has been recognized in both the state and local art shows and is pursuing the C- attending CCAD in the fall where she can continue to create and inspire others. Not only is Anna a fantastic artist, but she's a fantastic student and leader in our building. Anna takes a rigorous schedule this year of college classes in both math and art design. She's an important member of our news broadcast team, member of the varsity tennis team. Her favorite mediums are painting and drawing. Uh, She is, without doing the calculations currently, I can't reveal where we're at with the third term ending, near the, at least near the top of her class, and we'll reveal class rankings um, for our commencement ceremony. And she is also treasurer of both Key Club and National Honor Society. Anna? I just want to say thank you to my teachers, Ms. Emma Hines, and everybody at my school, and thank you, Mr. Ferris, for that lovely introduction. Um, And... A special biggest thank you to the commissioners for like hosting this event, allowing us to all be recognized. I appreciate all you do for the arts and how you support like, like everything, all our programs. And um, after I get my degree, plan for me to come back and infiltrate all these programs and design everything for you. All right. <laughs> Tattoos are a form of self-expression, which is why I have some. (laughs) All right, next up is uh, Worthington, the Worthington School District. Uh, Laura Zyke, uh, uh, school council, and uh, Ms. Zyke is part of the the Linworth Experiential Program. 
uh, and brought two outstanding artists with her. Please introduce them and tell us more about the students uh, and their achievements. Okay, um, thank you so much for having us. My name is Laura Zalk, school counselor. Oh, sorry. And no, no problem. <laughs> um, so one of our, so I have Ruthie Wolf here, and Ruthie is a sophomore, and then our other student is a junior and is taking the state-sponsored ACT this morning, so she's unable to be here. But um, I'll say a, a few words about Casey as well. So um, just, I guess, a little shout out to Ag Week here. Um, in Worthington here at the experiential program we have we partner with the Worthington Resource Pantry and as if anybody um, anybody who has even a, a small garden you know that it's not always glamorous and so Ruthie was one of those people last summer who I'm like you know we have like this little app I'm like can anybody help water and Ruthie's like sure I'll be there and so you know on those 95 degree days Ruthie was watering these little things um, it wasn't really harvesting time so just kind of keeping that going and um, I mean just one example of, of how Ruthie thinks of, um, outside of herself so um, so I am a, rep a representative of both Thomas and Kilbourne high schools in Worthington so we have two high schools thousands of students, and then we are at a very small ex experiential program of the two schools. So um, already you can see that, you know, Ruthie's one who's willing to go against the grain um, of the traditional learning experience, which is really cool. Um, so I, we have two hour staff meetings every Monday. And last night when I was talking about how um, I had the opportunity to present Ruthie, the teachers hopped in and said, well, what about this? What about this? And so we had a shared Google Doc with 10 of us, and we we're writing all about Ruthie. So it was really fun. So I'm actually um, kind of scrapping what my little notes, and I am going to um, read what we wrote together, which is more meaningful. So, all right. From day one, Ruthie stood out as a serious thinker and a consistent contributor in classes, no matter if they were all freshmen or a mixed group of upperclassmen. For many teachers, it was unclear if this, excuse me, if this productive and inventive mind who was always sketching would keep up on the pace and in going into second semester, but Ruthie did so. Now as a sophomore, this is a student we may look to um, when we want to enhance class discussion and push classmates to think more than just react. Even in these moments, Ruthie is considerate of all classmates and demands no special attention. Ruthie embraces opportunity to be creative in classes, and last year Ruthie created artwork and special projects for multiple courses. Ruthie didn't see extra projects as a burden, but an opportunity. For one teacher, Ruthie improved upon multiple course materials knowing that it was something that wasn't really in the teacher's skill set, artistically speaking, that is. One example of this was creating a new world map for a mock. <laughs> Yeah, for a mock, we all heard about this, for a mock world um, that they use for special simulations, Ruthie basically said, uh, let me take this home and I'll, I'll just make it better and bring it back. And she did. Uh, Ruthie offers help to all and uses their special talents to amplify our community. So um, Ruthie is one of those just very humble students. Uh, we actually, at the experiential program, since we are small, we don't have, we don't offer fine arts. Like we don't have somebody licensed in our building to teach fine arts. So we, I guess, have the opportunity to see Ruthie in a different way, um, sharing her skill set and just um, overall creativity and willingness to give back to our community. So we're very fortunate for that. Welcome. <laughs> and then I'll just speak really briefly of Casey Harden, who was an, unable to be here, if that's okay. Um, so Casey is a junior, as you know, and she, um, I'll just read a couple things here. Casey embraces many of the qualities that we hope for in an experiential learning program. She pushes herself academically as well as pursues her passions. As a freshman, we all knew that Casey was talented, but her artistic skills and reflective discussions really stand out um, now that she's an upperclassman. She's immensely talented, humble. Um, and one of the cool things about Casey is she's willing to really, um, she seeks ways to give back in creative ways. So she, she um, helps coordinate like backpack drives um, and she is involved with like holiday help um, organizations. So uh, she's been a really great 
contributor to our community as well, and we're happy to be really pleased to have both of these students representing Worthington. Very proud. All right. Um, well, let's get a photo. Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm really proud of the school I am at. I think it has amazing opportunities. Um, unlike a lot of the students here today, I don't really know what I'm planning on doing with my future. I am a sophomore after all. But coming up, we do have um, an interim, which is a week off of school where we devote 30 hours, if not 40 hours of our time back into um, a mentorship or an internship of some kind. Um, uh, I'm using this opportunity to volunteer at the McConnell Art Center to set up a, I believe, a film um, project that everyone's got going on. I'm really excited and looking forward to setting that up. Um, I don't know. It was really cool to be here, so thank you. Absolutely. All right, would my, uh, that, that finishes up the school districts. Um, would either of my colleagues like to add anything? Sure, oh, yeah. okay, thank you. Thank you, President uh, O'Grady. Um, to the students, to the parents, to the teachers and administration at those various schools, um, congratulations and good luck to all of you. Uh, my son is a sophomore um, studying graphic arts at Arts Center in Pasadena near Los Angeles. And what I know for sure is that, and when, and, and when they talked about what you all are studying in school and, um, or what you're thinking about studying, uh, what I know for sure is that all of you have the perfect mindset about balancing art with other um, aspects because they all go together very well. I'm thinking about my son who's studying graphic arts, uh, but he's also um, uh, learning about business and entrepreneurship and uh, in different um, aspects of the creative economy in the broader sense. So I just want to encourage you uh, and congratulate you for your accomplishments. It's very, very impressive. Uh, and, and tell you just good luck. Thank you so much for being here today. Congratulations. Yeah, I would just um, echo uh, Commissioner Boyce and uh, you know all of the teachers, parents, administrators, and supporting uh, these students and um, the various forms of art. Um, Likewise, I have a daughter who's a freshman at um, Kentucky studying poli sci, but trying to figure out how can she also continue to move forward with things that um, inspire her and bring her joy, which is in, in musical theater space and vocal ensemble. And I was like, you don't, it's not always chocolate vanilla chews, right? Like what the students um, here show today that you can, you know, do multiple things um, and, and still move forward with your form of self-expression. And so uh, I think it's pretty cool that you students, um, you know, continue to move forward and progress in your careers in arts and whatever that looks like. And whatever, even when you don't know what it looks like, like I'm under 50, as we've already established, and I'm still trying to figure out what life looks like for me, right? Um, and I don't know what I want to do with my future, but... <laughs> Um, and, and so it's okay if you don't know exactly what you want to do. You will land right where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. And so 
you know, I'm often asked, especially last week, um, I got to spend some time with kiddos in pre-K, and then I was at the State of the Girls speaking for the Girl Scouts, and I, both times I was asked, what inspires me? And what inspires me are the students that are here today, or the pre-K kiddos that I spent time with last week, or the girls and Girl Scouts, because um, you all aren't our future leaders. Like, you're our leaders of today. Um, as you get to see, we have salutatorians and musicians and uh, governors and, you know, early childhood specialists who or will be teaching our, our next generation. And so I'm inspired by each and every one of you. I'm happy to support the arts in, in every form, um, being a member of this board of commissioners. Um, and I look forward to seeing how your future uh, progress um, coming back here in Franklin County and um, sharing your talents and your gifts and skills with all of our residents. So thank you so much for being here. And again, congratulations. Well, so we established, you know, long ago that um, I am not the creative or talented one. Um, you know, I grew up the youngest of 12 kids, um, big family, other creative uh siblings um my kids my kids are all uh, creative uh, my wife is very creative and talented um but i was never that i was the, the i was the jock growing up and couldn't couldn't draw couldn't couldn't paint couldn't sing couldn't dance couldn't you know but i have an appreciation for the arts and always have had an appreciation for the arts i uh, grew up around all of these artists and grew up around um a lot of uh you know different uh, all of the different mediums. And so um, years ago when Commissioner Brown brought up the idea that we, we celebrate athletes here, we have always celebrated athletes here ever since I became a commissioner, she brought up the idea, wait a minute, why are we celebrating athletes and not artists and, and scholars? And I said, I, well, you know what, that's a great idea. And so we started celebrating artists and scholars years ago because we have an appreciation for the arts and we have an appreciation for for uh, academics here as well. And so we've always done that, even if I have not a single creative bone in my body, um, because we appreciate you and we appreciate all that you bring. Um, and Commissioner Boyce agrees with me, he's not creative either. Uh, <laughs> he made that clear. <laughs> but he also has an appreciation for the arts, um, an appreciation for those who, and, and for, not only for you, but for what it is that you bring to our community, for what it is that the arts brings. You know, Director Shimmer, our economic development director, is here. Well, we cannot have a thriving community. We cannot have a thriving economic community, a strong economic community, if we don't have a strong arts community. Uh, we, we talk to Tom about this all the time. We can't have a strong uh, economic community if we don't have a strong human services community. It all goes hand in hand. It's a, it's a hand in glove approach. If we aren't treating those amongst us that are the least amongst us the way that we should, then, then business doesn't want to do business here. If we don't have a strong arts community, then business doesn't want to do business here. It's important. It's very, very important. It's vitally important, which is why I mentioned to Tom all the time that we have to have a strong public arts community, and he agrees with me, which is, you know, it's something that we work on all the time, which is why I was walking around Copenhagen and walking around Odense taking pictures of some beautiful public art. I actually even took pictures of some terrible public art <laughs> because public art's important whether I think it's beautiful or I don't. You know, it's important to have public art. Uh, you know, I, who knows what, you know, what, what I think is beautiful and what you think is beautiful. You know, it's all in the eye of the beholder. And so what you do is important. You know, the fact that you do it is important. And who you are is important to this community. So we, and one, one of the things that we've been working on very, very hard for a number of years is to make sure that when you go away to college, because some of you, you know, indicated you're going away to college, including Arkansas, you know, you, you should want to come back here. We want you to come back here. You know, we want you to run for governor. We want you to come back here because it's important to believe that there's something here for you when you're done going to school. There's something here in this community for you when you're done going to school. So thank you all for being here today. This kind of con this concludes our arts and scholars portion of the program. Doesn't mean you gotta go. You're welcome to stay and learn about county government because what we do here is important every day. But we also know that 
some of your eyes may glaze over, and you know, if you need a nap, <laughs> stay. But if you have some place to be, including back at school, you go ahead and go. We're okay with that. So thank you guys. Administrators, thank you for taking your time to bring them here with us with you today. We appreciate what you guys do too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Absolutely. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, you See too, we, Mr. Thanks. Governor. Mr. Governor. <laughs> All right. Well, Mr. Robertson, Mr. Engineer, you're up first today. Well, we got to do approval in a minute. Commissioner, we've got to move for approval. minutes. Minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. While he's walking to the podium, we need approval in the minutes of February 7th, February 21st, February 28th, 2023 20, general sessions, and the February 16th and 23rd, 2023 briefing session. So move. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Thank you. The minutes have been approved. All right. We have a public hearing for the resolution 018223. Can clerk, can you please read the public hearing of the record? Final hearing for establishing, altering, and widening of Cleveland and Avenue, County Road Number 75, from Huey Road, Township Road Number 79, to Cook Road, County Road Number 80, Clinton Township, Franklin County, Ohio. All right. I'd like to open the public hearing for this resolution. Is there anyone here? Would like to speak on the public hearing? Well, seeing none, I'd like to close the public hearing and have the clerk read the resolution into the record. Resolution number 18223, final hearing for establishing, altering, and widening of Cleveland Avenue, County Road number 75, from Huey Road, Township Road number 79, to Cook Road, County Road number 80, Clinton Township, Franklin County, Ohio. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Cornell Robertson, honored to serve as Franklin County Engineer, Franklin County Drainage Engineer, Franklin County Farm Bureau member, and longtime friend of the Franklin County Fair, as well as, I'll go ahead and point that out, I'm over 50. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioners, I'm invigorated by today's general session. This is great. So many great groups and the energy level just feels so nice. It reminds me of the general sessions that we had prior to the pandemic. So thank you for what you all are doing and your leadership. Thank you. In regard to Pi Day, this is a special <laughs> day for engineers. And uh, Commissioner Boyce touched on it already. Uh, but I would like to add that at 1.59 p.m. today, it gets even more special. At that time, it will be Pi Day, Pi Hour. 3.14159. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. This room's full of too many nerds at this point. <laughs> all right, okay, yeah. go ahead. And, and then thinking about the Farm Bureau <laughs> and the National Farm Bureau Week that's coming up, thinking about the Franklin County Fair, mm -hmm. and just a quick reminder that the Franklin County Fair this year is going to be from Monday, July 17th through Sunday, July 23rd. And as part of the fair, you know that we have a chili contest, and it's Cornell's chili contest. And now I understand why Commissioner Grady is so successful on winning the hottest chili uh, <laughs> time and time again. Mm -hmm. It's the secret peppers that he raises. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Well, hot peppers are all a product of the, of the, the, the summer heat. <laughs> So I'm just looking to see when. <laughs> and though on. I'm not a farmer myself, I am a Farm Bureau member, mm -hmm. and I appreciate farmers at least three times a day, <laughs> sometimes more. <laughs> Thinking about the students mm -hmm. and the arts folks, I would like to make mention that it was an honor for me to meet the future Governor <laughs> Robinson of Ohio. Mm -hmm. 
and all students were fine individuals. I'd like to make a plug for the Franklin County Engineer's Office and let folks know, maybe the students will watch the video afterwards and see that the Franklin County Engineer's Office, we have graphic arts designers employed. And with our youth program, if any of those folks would be interested, they may be able to apply for employment this summer. We're currently filling those positions and we, we have a, an hourly rate of somewhere between $17 per hour to $22 per hour. So we're trying to be competitive knowing how, how, how hard it is to attract youth and workforce in general wow. to organizations. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right, now on with our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> The capital improvement project of this resolution is in the northeast part of the county in Clinton Township along Cleveland Avenue from Huey Road north to Cook Road. This transportation and infrastructure investment will improve pedestrian safety by adding five enhanced crosswalks with RRFBs, rectangular rapid flashing beacons, raised islands in the center of the roadway, and curb ramp upgrades. Access management will also be implemented along the corridor. With this particular resolution, I'm asking you to approve and sign the right-of-way plans, which will allow the engineer's office to begin the right-of-way acquisition process and hire appraisers and so forth. Happy to answer any questions you may have. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 182-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 18223 has been adopted. Resolution number 18323. Resolution approving roadway grading and drainage plans for Pegasus Estates, Jackson Township, Franklin County, Ohio. This seven lot subdivision is in the southwest part of the county in Jackson Township on the north side of Boar Road between Buckeye Parkway and State Route 104. With this resolution, I'm asking you to approve and sign the plans for the street, storm sewer, and water line infrastructure improvements. Pending any questions, I request your approval. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 183-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 183-23 has been adopted. Thank you all very much. Again, enjoy Pi Day as well as Pi Day Hour. <laughs> Thank you. Has it ever been established? Is it sweet potato or pumpkin? What? Pie. Has what been established? Like, which one is superior? Uh, you know, I like them both, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> bring, me, bring me pie. We pie is good. For today. We should have I think that's the answer. Just pie is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, thank you, Cornell. Next is the prosecuting attorney. Resolution number 184-23. Resolution authorizing a transfer of general fund appropriations for the addition of three full-time victims witness advocates. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Joelle Nielsen. I am the director of the Victim Witness Assistance Program. This is Dan Meyer. He is the director of our prosecutors in the SVU unit, the Special Victims Unit. Um, Today's resolution would provide supplemental budget appropriations for three additional victim witness assistants that I will actually call advocates. Um, our advocates are some of the most significant representatives of our office. They're typically the first contact with victims of violent crime, usually the last contact as well. Uh, they support um, victims throughout the whole court process, going to attend hearings with victims, being involved in preparation of trials with the prosecuting attorneys, um, amongst many other things. In uh, 2018, our victim advocates carried a caseload of anywhere from 110, 100 to 110 cases. Um, now they are up to 180 to 200, uh, so a very large <laughs> percentage of uh, increase there. Uh, we are, we are asking this. We actually, Senate Bill 288 uh, is a strangulation bill that will actually increase our caseload dramatically by uh, upwards of 300 or more cases a year. Um, adding three advocates would spread the existing caseload better and enable our office to better serve uh, victims 
um, currently and in anticipation of Senate Bill 288. Um, pending any questions, we would respectfully request approval of this resolution. Okay. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 184-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Resolution number 184-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, the Sheriff's Office. Resolution number 185-23. Resolution authorizing contract extension number three with Com Products Incorporated, doing business as BNC Communications, for the provision of maintenance and repair of fixed mobile and portable radio equipment in the amount of $110,272. Good morning, Commissioners and County Administration. Albert Smith, Assistant Finance Director for the Sheriff's Office. <clears throat> Our resolution authorizes a one-year contract extension through January 19th of 2024 with BNC Communications for the maintenance and repair of Sheriff's Office radio equipment. Uh, this is the third and final contract extension with BNC Communication, which was originally passed under resolution number 19-19 on January 15th of 2019. Uh, this contract will not exceed $110,272. Any, any questions? I request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 185-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 185-23 has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Albert. All right. Uh, animal Care and Control. Resolution number 18623. Resolution authorizing the acceptance of a gift from the estate of Catherine D. Denton in the amount of $8,000. Good morning, Commissioners. Lionel Hamilton, Fiscal Officer for Animal Care and Control. This resolution <laughs> seeks the acceptance of funds received in the amount of $8,000 as a gift donation from the estate of Catherine D. Denton. Pending any questions, we will re we respectfully request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 186-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 186-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Uh, community partnerships. Resolution number 187-23. Resolution authorizing community partnership grant agreements with various statutory partners for calendar year 2023 in the amount of $2,959,781. Good morning, um, commissioners and county administration. Brittany Strickland Hilliard, community partnership coordinator. <clears throat> this resolution will authorize a grant agreement for community partnerships 2023 statutory partners in the amount of two million nine hundred fifty nine thousand seven hundred eighty one statutory partners for 2023 include Columbus Humane to investigate animal cruelty cases Columbus Public Health Department for Ben Franklin tuberculosis testing program <clears throat> Franklin County Public Health for this <clears throat> for its public health nurse led House Visiting Program to Address Black and Minority Infant Mortality, Franklin Park Conservatory Growing the Green Community Outreach and Education Program and Community Gardens. All grant agreements are for one year and require specific reporting metrics to track program successes. Site visits will also be completed to ensure successful implementation of all funding programs. If there are no questions or comments, I respectfully request the approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 187-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Mm. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 187-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 188-23. Resolution authorizing community partnership grant agreements with statutory partner, the Ohio State University Extension, for calendar year 2023 in the amount of $225,000. Good morning again. This resolution will authorize a grant agreement for community partnership statutory partners specifically of $225,000 for the Ohio State University's extension program related to agriculture and natural resources, community development, and family and consumer sciences. All grant agreements are for one year and require specific reporting metrics, track program success, and site visits will be conducted. If there are no questions or comments, I respectfully request the approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move to approve resolution 188-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. 
Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Boyce. Abstain. Resolution number 188-23 has been adopted with Commissioner Boyce's noted abstention. All right, thank you, Brittany. Um, economic Development and Planning. Resolution number 189-23. Resolution authorizing an economic development agreement with the Greater Columbus Sports Commission to encourage economic development and tourism through the attraction, retention, and promotion of sporting events on behalf of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners in the amount of $200,000. Good morning, commissioners, administration, staff, Emmanuel Torres, Assistant Director of Economic Development and Planning. And this resolution will authorize the 2023 annual partner agreement with the Greater Columbus Sports Commission for $200,000. The Sports Commission as a division of the Greater Columbus Convention and Visitors Bureau operating within Franklin County drives collaboration efforts to attracting and host a wide variety of sporting events while playing a significant role in promoting tourism, visitation in Franklin County and the Greater Columbus area. During the 2022 grant program year, the Sports Commission accomplished 100,000 or 131,000 295 hotel room nights uh, bookings, 91 sports events were hosted and serviced, and 132 new leads were developed for future events. Under the terms of this agreement, the Sports Commission will expand and continue sales activities, marketing, and bidding to bring sporting and competitive events to Franklin County, thereby increasing tourism activities that generate additional bed and sales tax while employing Franklin County residents. Pending any questions, I respectfully request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 189-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 189-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 190-23. Resolution adopting the home investment partnerships American Rescue Plan Allocation Plan. Good morning, commissioners and administration. My name is Janae Cosby. I'm the Community Development Administrator for Franklin County's Economic Development and Planning Agency. This resolution will authorize Franklin County's Home ARP Plan. This plan will address the critical need for homelessness assistance and supportive services across the county. These funds will be used to carry out activities that must primarily benefit qualifying individuals and families who are homeless, at risk of homelessness, fleeing or attempting to flee domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, stalking, and or human trafficking, along with other vulnerable populations as defined by HUD. Franklin County received $3,158,302 to benefit our, our community's qualifying populations, and the allocation plan describes how the county will intend to use and distribute these funds as required in HUD CPD Notice 2110. The, counties, the county determined the primary use of home ARP funding is to produce affordable housing. County staff understands that the qualifying populations require a wide range of services to remain stably housed and funding for supportive services is needed to complement the planned home ARP housing development activity. Our home ARP plan funding is also aligned with Franklin County's Rise Together Blueprint for Poverty Reduction and the way Franklin County will address these, uh, allocate these funds align with the Rise Together Blueprint for Poverty, Poverty Goals 5, 6, and 7. The county plans of the 3.1 million received, the county plans to invest 2.5 million in the development of affordable rental housing, 200,000 in supportive services to help those living in the created units remain housed, and the county will also utilize up to 450,000 to administer the home plan funding. The plan can be viewed currently on Franklin County's EDP website, along with comments from residents and stakeholders from our February 16th public meeting. So pending any questions or comments, I respectfully request your approval of this resolution. Thank you. Uh, if there are no comments or questions, okay, move for adoption of 190-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 190-23 has been adopted. Thanks, Janae. Thank you. Thank you. All right, fleet management. Resolution number 191-23. Resolution authorizing the first contract extension with Byers Ford LLC for the supply and delivery of fleet automobiles in the amount of $1 million. Good morning, Commissioners. Charlotte Ashcraft, Director of Fleet Management. 
Uh, Fleet management is requesting approval of a contract extension for the supply and delivery of fleet automobiles. The commissioner's fleet consists of approximately 400 vehicles and fleet management establishes an annual replacement schedule. The contract was awarded to Buyers Ford LLC on March 23rd, 2021, resolution number 0213-21 for a period of two years with the option of three one-year extension periods. This is the first extension. Buyers Ford LLC has performed well over the last two years to obtain the vehicles we've needed. Manufacturers are still struggling with production capacity after COVID and all fleets are scrambling to get the vehicles they require. Buyers was able to provide us with 88% of all the vehicles we ordered. Uh, this contract extension is for a one-year period not to exceed $1 million. Uh, any questions? Uh, I respectfully request passage of this resolution. Uh, Mr. President, can I ask a question? Please. Yeah, thank you. Um, so given the um, chip shortage, are there are any of the vehicles that we're taking? I know a number, I'm actually in the market for a new car myself, um, <laughs> and so I know a lot of the cars that they have today without, with the chip shortages, they're still producing them, but they may, missing, may be missing certain features. Are we, are, do any of our cars have that issue or do we pretty much get pretty complete cars when, and, and they pretty much serve the purpose that we bought them for? Yes, any vehicle that we received is complete um, with all chips necessary. Uh, that is why there's such a delay in receiving them. Um, we ordered um, 13 police cruisers last year and we received 12. Um, the city of Columbus ordered 100 and received 19. Uh, it all went back to the chip shortage, mm -hmm. and they were attempting to fulfill as much of the need as they could. So Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. If there You're are welcome. No, if there are no further comments or questions, move for adoption of 191-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 191-23 has been adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Charlotte. Uh, job and Family Services. Resolution number 192-23. Resolution approving a contract with Get Creative LLC for work experience and design services for the Achieve More and Prosper program in the amount of $45,000. Good morning, Commissioners. Vivian Turner, Chief Administrator. This new pilot and internship program with the local MBE design firm, Get Creative, is a unique opportunity to make sure that youth voices are present as we embark on a campaign refresh for the AMP program. The youth interns will take part in skills-based workshops and training to Get Creative. Then they'll work directly with the team and our agency in redesigning our website, refreshing promotional materials and collateral, and developing and deploying an updated marketing strategy. And at the close of the six month internship, youth will earn credentials in web development, graphic design techniques, technology integration, and more. These are the skills and credentials they need to pursue careers in the creative economy, which generates over $9.1 billion annually and supports over 60,000 jobs here in Franklin County. This resolution supports goal number 11 of our Rise Together Blueprint and pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. All right, if there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 192-23. Second. Moved and seconded, voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 192-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 193-23, resolution approving an amendment for a COVID-19 recovery grant with the Greater Columbus Helping Hands Incorporated for college and career preparation programming in the amount of $225,482.30. Commissioners, this resolution would approve a modification to our existing subaward agreement with Greater Columbus Community Helping Hands, which you approved last September. It simply replaces the funding allocation for their mapping your future and stepping up to college programs with coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds rather than TANF. These American Rescue Plan dollar, Act dollars provide further flexibility to maintain the program model that has had so much success since its launch in 2014. All other terms and conditions of the agreement remain unchanged. The Greater Columbus Helping Hands 
Community Helping Hands remains on target to serve 350 high schoolers from low to moderate income households in the Whitehall, Groveport, Madison, and Southwestern School Districts. This resolution aligns with our Rise Together Blueprint Goal Number 11. And pending any questions, we request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 193-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 193-23 has been adopted. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Vivian. Um, justice policy and programs. Res resolution number 194-23. Resolution authorizing the execution of the pre-award conditions and acceptance of the Franklin County FY 2022 Services Training Officers, Prosecutors, excuse me, Services Training Officers, Prosecutors, Violence Against Women's Act block grant award and granting authority to the county administrator to sign all acceptance documents and waivers related to the grant program in the amount of $631,544.15. Good morning, commissioners and county administration. Rochelle Pry, director for the Office of Justice Policy and Programs. This resolution is presented to the Board of Commissioners for execution of all pre-award conditions and an acceptance of the FY 2022 Stop Violence Against Women Act block grant OJPP is also requesting authorization for the county administrator to sign all acceptance documents and waivers related to this program. Funding for the grant is provided by the Office of the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services as a pass through from the Federal Office of Violence Against Women. Grant funds will be used to enhance prosecution, law enforcement, and victim services targeted to female victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, and dating violence. During the calendar year 2022 implementation period, VAWA funding supported direct services to 3,249 victims and training to 690 professionals and volunteers. Additionally, 2,983 cases were able to be taken on by a specialized prosecution section of the Columbus City Attorney and Franklin County Prosecutor's Offices. The award period would be January 2023 to December of 2023. Several recipient awards will be brought before the commissioners under separate resolution. Pending any questions, we would seek your approval of this resolution. Thank you. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 194-23. Oh, second. Sorry. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 194-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 195-23. Resolution authorizing the execution of the pre-award conditions and acceptance of the Franklin County FY 2022 Services Training Officers Prosecutors Violence Against Women Act Administrative Grant Award and granting authority to the county administrator to sign all acceptance documents and waivers related to the grant program in the amount of $20,595.25. Similar to our previous resolution, OJPP is also requesting authorization for the county administrator to sign all acceptance documents and waivers related to this grant program. Funding for this program is also uh, received through the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services as a pass through from the Federal Office of Violence Against Women. The administrative grant will require a cash match, cash match of $5,148.81 from Franklin County's general fund. The FY 2022 VAWA Administrative Award reflects a 9.2% decrease over the FY 2021 award period. Pending any questions, we would ask your approval of this re resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 195-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 195-23 has been adopted. Resolution number 196-23. Resolution authorizing the execution of the pre-award conditions and acceptance of an FY 2022 Edward and Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Award and granting authority to the county administrator to sign all acceptance documents and waivers related to the grant program in the amount of $34,605.97. This resolution is presented to the Board of Commissioners for authorization of the Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant from the Office of Criminal Justice Services as a pass-through from the United States Department of Justice Bureau of Justice Assistance. The purpose of this grant is to provide specialized training to CASA volunteer guardians at LIDEM. 
This is the first year in a four year step down grant for this project and requires a cash match of 25% um, from Franklin County's general fund. Grant funds will be used to cover employee salaries and benefits associated with the specialized training of our volunteers. Pending any questions, we would seek your approval of this resolution. If uh, there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 196-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 196-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Thank Director you. Pride. Uh, now to public facilities management. Resolution number 197-23. Resolution authorizing a supplemental contract with Johnson Controls Fire Protection LP for the provision of security services for the Franklin County Board of Elections in the amount of $16,400. Good morning, Commissioners. Darla Reardon, Director, Public Facilities Management. Also joining me today is Antone White, Director of the Franklin County Board of Elections. Johnson Controls Fire Protection LP offers services under the State of Ohio Department of Administrative Services state term schedule. This resolution authorizes a supplemental contract with Johnson Controls Fire Protection LP for the provision of security services for the Franklin County Board of Elections at 1700 Morse Road, including design and engineer drawings related to Directive 2022-38 provided by the Ohio Secretary of State. This contract is a firm fixed price contract with a not to exceed amount of 16,400 and services are to be completed within 45 days. We appreciate the assistance of the purchasing department and prosecutor's office with a supplemental contract. Antone White, director of the board of elections is available for questions. Pending any questions, we respectfully request your approval of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no comments or questions, Move for adoption of 197-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 197-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Darla. Uh, purchasing department. Resolution number 198-23. Resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $5,493,131.22. Good morning, Commissioners. Megan Perry Ballinier, Director of Purchasing, and joining me is Tamika Bumper, Economic Equity Administrator in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. This resolution requests your approval of 141 purchase orders for which the County Auditor has pre-certified available funding. Tamika has the supplier diversity data for this week. Good morning, Tamika. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners and County Administration. Director Perry Ballinier is asking for approval for 13 purchase orders with 4% awarded to small business enterprises and 6% awarded to women business enterprises and 1% going to minority business enterprises, totaling $5,493,131.22. Once approved, agencies will have provided opportunities for equity and inclusion for small businesses. Pending any questions or comments, we respectfully request your approval of this resolution. If there are no comments or questions, move for adoption of 198-23. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 198-23 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, do we have any journalization this morning? Yes, we do. We have one. Case number ANX-07-23, an expedited type 2 annexation petition, ANX-07-23, was filed with the Franklin County Economic Development and Planning Department on March 8, 2023. The petition is requesting to annex 98.7 acres from Jackson Township to the city of Grove City. The petition will be considered by the Board of Commissioners on April 11, 2023. The sites are 4614 Wrench Road, PID number 160-002653, and Wrench Road, PID number 160-000156. All right. Um, is there any uh, media on here in the, in the room or online that would like to ask questions of the commissioner? Okay, well, there. Um, 
concludes the meeting. Uh, we now have a resolution of the Board of Commissioners. Resolution number 199-23. Resolution of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners to convene into executive session to confer with the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office concerning pending or imminent litigation. Uh, there, uh, oh, um, I, this is me? Yeah. Yes. I move to convene into executive session to confer with an attorney of the public body concerning disputes involved in the public body that are subject to the pending or imminent court action. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Boyce. Yes. Commissioner Crawley. Yes. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Resolution number 199-23 has been adopted to convene into executive session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.